Good morning, everybody. I'm Bishop Dr. Peter from the UK. And those of you that have seen my short preaches in the past will know that I like to take this opportunity to spend just a few minutes talking about a specific aspect of our faith. I apologise that I've been unable to do this for a few weeks, but that's to matters outside of my control. Today I'm going to pick up on Matthew that I was working my way through, and I'm going to be using Matthew 15, 10 to 20. It's really an issue about what defiles a person. Let's read the scripture. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up, that them alone, they are blind guides, and if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us, and he said, are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? And what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the stomach, proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the ha heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. The first words of this particular scripture in the first paragraph seems to be like a, a simple statement to us were clearly found shocking to the Jews. I mean... Let's face it, for thousands of years they had been taught that their dietary laws were mandatory if one wanted to be righteous before God. To eat pork, for example, was to defile oneself, to become unclean in God's eyes. It was sinful. The entire basis of Judaism lay in literal compliance with the law. To say this is outright wrong, as Jesus does here, cuts the legs from beneath the Pharisees' religious beliefs. You know, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, specifically the first section in Matthew 5, Jesus has already preached that the righteousness of the heart and mind was more important to God than the outward compliance with ritual. Christ also gave a rather perplexing gloss that he had not come to abolish the law, but to fulfil it. In effect, he attacked Jewish hypocrisy, not Judaism. Similarly, when he was accused of impiety because his disciples gather food on the Sabbath. And when he healed the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath, Matthew 12, he sought to conciliate his teachings and actions with the laws of Moses. His defence to his critics was that they were simply interpreting the law incorrectly. Now, this is something we can, of course, do today. Here, however, Christ seems to take his message a full step closer 
to almost outright revolution. His words imply that a core belief of the Pharisees, based explicitly on the law of Moses, is simply wrong. And in fact, the parallel version in Mark spells it out for us. Mark 7, thus he declared all foods clean. This raises a huge headache for the Bible reader. <laughs> How can we square Christ's rejection of the dietary laws with his previous statement, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished? Matthew 5.18 and we have seen in our previous sessions that Christ often would transform a literal outward law. That is a law pertaining to some particular external action into a spiritual equivalent, a more general rule for the heart. In many cases, he would take a mosaic law, he would take and make a mosaic law more stringent such as for example telling us that holding hatred in our hearts was the equivalent to murder that's a big step further than where Moses was so as to the dietary law we might say that Christ has not completely abolished them but rather transformed them let me conclude Christ continues to speak in terms of defilement, but he is concerned not with defilement of the body, but rather defilement of the soul. The laws that we do not put anything unclean into our mouth are transformed into a rule that allows anything unclean to come out of our mouth. We can surely harm our bodies by ingesting something harmful, but this will only affect our life on earth. What will affect our righteousness before God and thus our eternal life is what we emit from our mouths. Father God, we give thanks to you this day.